Hey guys, welcome to another episode of RGCSC Biology Revision. Today we're going to take a look at the topic of variation and selection. That is topic 18 in the syllabus, so I want you to have a quick read and we'll begin the video. So variation is defined as differences between individuals within the same species. You can have genetic variation, which is differences in genetics uh, amongst those individuals. And two important, important sources of this genetic variation is sexual reproduction and mutation. Right? You can also have phenotypic variation, which is the variability of phenotypes. And this is influenced by both genetic and environmental factors. So there's two forms, continuous and discontinuous variation, where continuous is basically, it results in a range of phenotypes that lie between two extremes. For example, height, you can be tall and you can be short and there's a wide spectrum in between. Uh, discontinuous variation is more like a black and white yes or no answer and it results in a limited number of phenotypes with absolutely no intermediates. It's either, you know, for example, tongue rolling. Can you tongue roll or can you not? And this type of variation is quite often mainly due to uh, genetics alone rather than environmental influence. So mutation, as we talked about before, is an important part of uh, how we have genetic variation, right? So a spontaneous change in gene or a chromosome is what we call a mutation and this can happen by exposure to ionizing radiation. Okay, so uh, basically it causes uh, errors during DNA replication and during that phase and when that happens, uh, you get a change in, in a gene or a chromosome and basically new mutations uh, generate new alleles which can be uh, good or bad depending on you know, what the environment is looking for. But we'll, we'll take a look at that in a bit more detail later. So sickle cell anemia is uh, basically when you have these abnormal hemoglobins in your blood. So this, the left-hand diagram here is your normal red blood cells containing normal hemoglobin. They have this sort of um, shape here, whereas a sickle cell is a lot thinner, um, and obviously they look a lot less efficient at transporting oxygen. Right, so sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation in the gene that codes for hemoglobin. You have abnormal genes, uh, that causes sickle-shaped red blood cells, and when red blood cells are sickle-shaped like this, uh, it's a lot less efficient at oxygen transport and quite a lot more likely to get stuck in the capillaries, which if it does, then prevents blood flow. So the faulty allele is dominated by the normal hemoglobin, but it can still have an effect in the heterozygous genotype, sort of like codominant. So basically there's four main genotypes that you have to understand. So one, a normal person with two normal hemoglobin alleles, uh, in which case they don't have any sort of anemia. Uh, you can have a carrier where they've got one allele that's normal but one allele that's abnormal, or so therefore you know some of their red blood cells in their bloodstream have the sickle cell straight trait, sorry, um, and this is not life-threatening, but if both alleles have the uh, the code for sickle cell anemia or sickle cell hemoglobin, that becomes pretty life-threatening uh, life because, you know, the, the, the oxygen transport is just going to be too inefficient, and as we talked about before, capillaries can often, often be blocked by these sickle cell uh, hemoglobin or red blood cells. So this is important because when we think about malaria, malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by a parasite that specifically invades red blood cells. So certain mos uh, mosquitoes can host this parasite. So a person that is heterozygous for sickle cell anemia, so basically they're a carrier of the uh, abnormal hemoglobin or sickle cell hemoglobin um, allele, uh, they gain some protection from malaria. Okay, so this is because malaria parasites can't actually invade sickle cells. So because they can't invade sickle cells, there's a there's going to be a certain portion of the red blood cells that the parasites can't affect, so therefore they have some immunity against malaria. A person that is homozygous for sickle cell anemia obviously has full protection from malaria because none of these parasites can actually affect any of the blood cells because they're all sickle cell, cell shaped. But if someone has a homozygous uh, Gen uh, genotype for sickle cell anemia, then they're going to be at high risk of actually dying from it because it's a pretty life-threatening condition. Um, a person that is normal 
right? So they have two normal hemoglobin uh, alleles in their genes. They have absolutely no protection from malaria, and if they ever do go to a place that is high in malaria rates, then you know they will most likely contract that. So it's interesting because malaria is often quite prevalent in tropical areas. Why? Because this is the optimal climate for mosquitoes. And as again, mosquitoes host these uh, malaria parasites. So the prevalence of sickle cell anemia is also higher in these tropical areas that have a higher prevalence for malaria because in these areas, there's a selective advantage of having the, uh, the sickle cell allele because why it provides protection against malaria as we talked about above. So, there's certain adaptive features that we need to take a look at, right? So, inherited, uh, inherited functional features of an organism that increases its fitness is what we call adaptive features. Fitness being the chance of organism uh, surviving and producing in its uh, specified environment. So, you know, examples of adaptive features, hydrophytes, right? These are plants that can grow only in or on water. So they have certain adapt adaptive features like wide flat leaves, uh, reduced plant structure, thin or uh, no waxy cuticles, right? Small roots, somata uh, that are mostly open in the upper leaf surface. All these things basically help the plant and allow it to adapt into the environment. Uh, xerophytes are the opposite. These ones uh, survive in an environment that has very little water, so they need to have features that help them attain or you know preserve as much water as possible and they so therefore they've got like thick cuticles, small leaves, you know, smaller stomata, sunken stomata, rolled leaves, all these sort of stuff will aim to keep the humidity around the plant and therefore preserve the water and so to make sure that it's not lost unnecessarily. So selection, right? You've got two different types of selection that you need to be aware of. So natural selection is basically, for example, right? So you've got, you've got a lot of variation in the population, and we talked about that, that before. It could be from mutations, sexual reproduction, whatnot. There's a lot of variation, right? So a lot of offspring is produced with variation. And there's got to be competition for resources amongst individuals within a specified population, and therefore, uh, there's a struggle for survival. So reproduction by the more fitter individuals, i.e. the individuals that are more adapted for the environment, um, occur. So it's the ones that are able to survive through the environment that will uh, reproduce, and so therefore the more fitter individuals therefore will pass on their genes and alleles to the offspring and therefore the next generation. And over time, when this keeps happening, adaptive features of a population will change due to natural selection. And natural selection is basically a selection process uh, deemed by the environment or nature. And so this results in evolution. Therefore, over many, many generations, population becomes a lot more suited to the environment because only individuals that are very well adapted to the environment will actually survive and pass on their genes, right? So we call this the process of adaptation. Now, this basically, this is natural selection, right? But you can also have selective breeding, which is artificial selection. So natural selection is whereby the environment basically selects uh, the more fit individuals to survive, whereas artificial selection is not nature, but we as humans select what uh, what features are desirable. So individuals with desirable features are selected by humans, and crossing these desirable individuals uh, produce the next generations, and the genetics will therefore be carried over to the offspring, and therefore, um, you know, will produce more of these. Uh, individuals that have a certain traits that, that we want. For example, you know, cows that are more muscular for meat or, you know, crops that produce more offspring, whatever it might be. Uh, if we want something, then we just choose the individuals that have that specific trait and then we cross it. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any sort of questions, just comment down below and I will try to answer. Otherwise, you guys have a great day and I'll uh, see you in the next video.